we get loads of requests at the Sussex Wildlife Trust about feeding birds and it's a really brilliant idea especially in the winter so we've made a couple of short films just to give you some tips about it. I suppose the first thing is to really sort of wonder why we bother feeding the birds at all, what does it do? Well the fact is in, when it's really cold in the winter birds do die from starvation. Their small bodies just can't cope with the cold at night. They need lots and lots of food on board just to get them through the night. That's why you often see them feeding like crazy at about four o'clock in the afternoon just as it's getting dark. They're trying to fill their bodies up with fat just to get them through that very cold nighttime period. So feeding birds in winter actually does help keep your garden birds alive. But I suppose one of the best reasons to feed birds is simply that we enjoy seeing them in the garden. Looking at birds in the garden has a really therapeutic effect for people of all ages and it's a great way to get the family involved in bringing nature into their lives. Right, let's start off then by having a look at some of the different kinds of food available and the different sort of feeders we can use. I suppose that the staple sort of diet, the one basic thing that everybody knows about is peanuts. Okay, and peanuts are good food because they're full of fat, they're full of proteins, and the birds love them. But there is a word of warning with peanuts. Up to me, Sue. And that's that they can contain these toxins called aflatoxins. It's caused by a sort of fungus, a, a mould that can grow on the peanuts. Now, all peanuts are supposed to be tested for these because they're very dangerous. They can actually cause cancer in birds, and in people as well for that matter. Um, so that means that you must be careful where you buy your peanuts from. Make sure you get them from a reputable supplier, whoever that is. But basically, good garden centres, decent pet shops, and especially if the peanuts have got a brand name on them. OK, let's have a look and see what else we've got. This is a general sort of table seed. It contains all sorts of things like sunflower hearts, little corn chips, various other kinds of seed too. Over here we've got this Niger seed, which is really only useful for goldfinches. We'll talk about that in a minute. Then we've got my favorite over here. This is sunflower hearts or sunflower kernels. They're sunflowers with the black bits already taken off and they are fantastic. And then finally, of course, we've got fat balls. So, what do we do with all of these things? Well, let's have a look. So, let's start off with peanuts then. Typical sort of wire mesh holder, but what's really important is that the entire thing is made of metal. You do get plastic ones, and even ones with plastic mesh. They won't last two minutes if there's any squirrels around. They'll have those apart in, in seconds. The more metal, the better, really. But if squirrels are still a problem, then you can get squirrel proof ones. Obviously the squirrels can't get through the sort of cagey bit on the outside, but the, the small birds, blue tits, great tits, uh, finches, should be able to squeeze through the bars. But that also does stop some other birds from getting at your peanuts, but you know, you can't have it both ways, but these will stop the squirrel attacks. Okay, what else have we got? For uh, the Niger seed, which is mostly used just for goldfinches, can you see, have a look at this Sue, do a close up. You see these tiny little holes, these tiny little slots in it. They're only just big enough for goldfinches to get their very thin little beaks in and get this tiny seed. Um, other birds, other finches can't really cope with it because it's just, they have, their bills are not fine enough. So niger seed is an option, but to be honest, I'm not that keen on it. I don't see the point in just favoring goldfinches and not you know, feeding everything else at the same time. And to be honest, in my garden, I've got both Niger seed available and sunflower hearts, and the goldfinches take no notice whatsoever of the Niger seed. I think it's a little bit of a waste of time, but it's your choice. So for the sunflower hearts themselves, then you want a decent seed feeder. And again, one that's preferably made of metal rather than plastic, because otherwise, the squirrels will be in in no time and wreck it. I've had this one for some years, quite frankly, and it's still in great condition. Uh, and it's one that comes apart quite easily for cleaning, and we'll have a look at cleaning a little bit later on. Also, we've got the uh, suet balls. Now, there's an important thing here. They always come with this little net on it. You want to get rid of that. 
it doesn't happen very often, but there are recorded cases where small birds have got their feet trapped in the netting and they've become completely trapped and can't get away. So you want to get rid of that, but then put the suet ball in some kind of holder like that. Otherwise, the squirrels will come and just take the, the entire thing away and that'll be it, that'll be the end of it. Um, I've also had foxes in sort of pinch them and sort of carry them off. So if they're in a, a thing like this, the birds can get at them. Suet is brilliant because it's got so much energy in it. It's fantastic winter food, but it's probably not necessary to use these suet balls in, in the uh, summer. Don't be tempted to use the fat from your roasting tin to make your own sort of fat balls up. That kind of fat is, is quite different. It can get onto the bird's feathers and clog them up. They can't sort of preen them, they can't keep them clean. Uh, and it, it's just not a good idea. So, what do we do with the table food? Well, you can make a table out of almost anything at all. Something like this, which is just a piece of marine ply stuck on a, a bit of log there and that's absolutely fine. Problem is, as soon as it gets windy, the whole lot just blows away, uh, and also the pigeons tend to come along and gobble up the whole lot in no time at all. But that still has its uses. Alternatively, we can have a decent table like this, which is a, a shop purchased one. The important thing about this table is there's a lip here, which stops the bird seed sort of all blowing away straight away whenever it gets windy but also there's a gap in the lip there's a bit where there's sort of not really any lip at all and that means that the rain and water can sort of wash away and it's easy to clean the thing you know you can brush brush old food away from it quite easily I've also adapted this one a little bit I put these little twigs in between the sort of uprights and that's just to slow the wood pigeons down a bit they still manage to get in and I don't mind feeding wood pigeons but the problem is they'll get in there gobble up the whole lot in five minutes and there's nothing left for anybody else so that helps to just to slow them down a little bit don't forget there's one more final thing you can do uh, and that's just sprinkle some food on the ground and that's great for things like blackbirds, chaffinches, thrushes, lots of birds that can't use bird feeders and some are a little bit nervous of going into tables like this. So food on the ground is also really useful as well. Now one big problem in the winter is ice forming on the top of your bird bath. That's a bit of a disaster. That's no good to birds at all. And they need just as much water in the winter as they do in summer, especially if it's frozen because they can't get water anywhere else. The only really effective way to prevent ice uh, forming on your bird bath is to get rid of all of the water in the afternoon. Just as it's getting towards dusk time, you need to tip the whole lot out and leave your bird bath dry overnight. Then first thing in the morning, fill it up again. I use hot water out of the hot tap in the kitchen. At least that gives it a fighting chance then of staying unfrozen for quite a few hours. And that's really the only effective way of preventing ice. Our next video will look at where and when to feed your garden birds and tackle the all important subject of preventing disease. So be sure to have a look at that too.